Hey guys, uh, this is Carmine Bufano, and uh, this is just a basic overall view of the environment, what 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 we're going to do here. Um, this is a bunch of videos explaining uh, Linux, servers, cloud. So, to start off, uh, you know, we are going to create a, a web server based on Linux. But before we do that, I just want to explain a little bit of, of the environment that we're in. All right, so uh, bring paint up here, do a little bit of drawing. Not the fastest computer. It's not the fastest computer in the world, so we'll, we'll get the job done though. <laughs> okay, great. So, what are we uh, doing here? What is our, 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 our end point? What are we trying to achieve? So, what I want to do in this video is uh, create a web server and just and show you the steps involved in installing the operating system and uh, getting familiar with the command line interface it's just because once you install it it's going to be basically a black screen with a with a cursor and you got to type commands and don't be overwhelmed by that because it's actually not that difficult it's pretty easy um, when I first started I saw videos just like this and they didn't explain like what the overall uh, what do you, you know what what is what are we really doing so I think you know this is just to understand um, our structure what we're doing here okay so we have internet access we, I have bios okay uh, here's my router my bios router it's also a Wi-Fi router so there's a little antenna um, Outside, there's a box on the wall where the BIOS comes in, and the cable guy runs a, a cable from there to your router inside your house. All right, so I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this. This router um, then has ports in the back, usually four, and you plug stuff into it, like your computer. All right, here's your computer keys here, your mouse, okay, so plug there, with the Wi-Fi, you have an iPad, um, you connect to it wirelessly, now when you connect to it, you know you're connected because number one, it'll say, the device will usually say now connected, and it'll give you the name of your network. If you're doing it wirelessly, um, that name is called an S SID, and it could be anything, really, okay? And when you connect with your iPad, and you see, you find your wireless access point, and click connect, you've seen this, it'll say now connected to, and with files, usually it's really just um, a bunch of random letters and numbers. If you have a Linksys router, usually it'll say Linksys. Um, when you connect with a wire to a computer, it'll just say connected. It won't really give you much else. So, what happens when you connect? When you connect, you get, um, usually, uh, you know, with, with home routers, it's set up with something called uh, DHCP. And what DHCP is, is just a automatic way for this router to give all the devices that are connected to it an IP address. All right? uh, IP address is a unique address that all the devices have in your network so that the router can keep track of everyone's request and in a way keep everything separated from each other. So if you have, let's say, your iPad and your browsing the internet and on your iPad you're going to google.com and uh, someone else at the same time is on a desktop computer that's wired 
and they're doing something else on the internet. They are on Facebook or whatever. Um, your both of those machines are requesting different things on the internet, and uh, so here's our computer again and keyboard. It's a horrible computer. Here's your iPad. All right. And uh, let's get that router back. So here's your FIOS router or your Linksys router, uh, whatever. Okay, so there's a wire here, okay, and your the internet is this way, right? So internet is coming into your house through this router. So let's say you go to uh, on your iPad here, you go into a website, and this iPad, the first thing it does when you type in uh, Google.com on on your browser on Safari on the iPad, it sends a request wirelessly uh, to the FiOS router and it says, "Hey, I want to go to Google." And this router says, "Because now because this iPad has an IP address, usually it'll be 192.168.1. You know, two to whatever between two and 254. It'll it'll have a number like 192.168.1.10. All right, and then this computer will be 192.168.1.11. So this is 10 and this is 11. So that this router knows well 192.168.1.10 uh, requested Google.com. So I'm gonna go out on the internet and and the router. The router is going to go out on the internet and request Google.com, okay? And when Google.com returns the web page, it comes back to the router, and the router says it, it looks at its table of IP addresses that it's handed out to all the devices and says, "Oh, well, I got a response back from Google. Who asked for Google?" And it'll look and it'll say, "Oh, 192.168.1.10 asked for Google." So let me send uh, that web page, that Google web page, back to this guy. All right. Uh, simultaneously, this guy, eleven, right, one nineteen one six eight one dot eleven, is uh, requesting Facebook.com or uh, video chatting or doing whatever. It and and it's requesting its own thing. All right, and it will also do the same thing. It'll go out and get Facebook.com. And when Facebook.com returns to the router, the router will say, router will say, oh, well, 192.168.1.11 requested that web page, so I'll send it back to this computer. It is, uh, that's, that's what the router mainly does, because you only have one internet connection, right? You have, um, you have one, what's called a public IP. So when you get, when you get an internet, Basically, that's what you're what you're paying for. You're paying for this public IP address. That one will never start with 192. It'll start with uh, any other number but 192 or 172 or 10. Right? Those uh, any any IP address that starts with either either 192, 172, or 10, uh, those are called non-routable or private IP addresses. Those will always be used inside um, your home or your business. Uh, so only the, the computers and, and printers and devices, any device that will get an IP address from within your infrastructure, within your home or your business, will have an IP address that starts with either 192, 172, or 110. It'll, it'll never be you'll never see any device on the internet with those IPs, right? So those IP addresses will always be on this side of the router, the internal side. On this side, the, the public facing side, the side that goes to your internet service provider, no matter who it is, uh, Time Warner, Optimum, Verizon, whoever, uh, there'll be only one IP address. There could be more, it really, you can buy as many as you want, but generally for home or small business you'll get. For home you'll usually get one. 
and that'll be a one public IP address. Okay, so let's make up a, a, a public IP. Let's say 70.201.127.82. Okay, I just made that up. That's your public IP. So to everyone on the outside on the internet, they know your address as this, as 70.201.127.82. All right, and then it's up to the router to keep track of what everybody behind him requests, and it acts as a proxy. It's the proxy for all of these guys. So if you have, you know, 10 computers, each of these computers can request a different web page, and they request it from your, your internal router, and your router goes out on the Internet on behalf of that computer, using that IP address that the rest of the internet uh, can recognize because the rest of the internet was not going to recognize your internal printer's IP address. It only knows, it will only recognize a public IP address that your service provider gave you, right? So 192.168.1.11 requests Google and then the router, and it requests it from your router, then your router actually goes out on the internet on that one interface and requests all of the web pages for every one of your devices and keeps track of who asked for what and then sends it back. As my beautiful diagram here clearly shows. <laughs> Alright, so let's let's delete this. Uh, drawing is not one of my strong suits. So, uh, what we're going to do in, in this demo is create a web server. So we are actually going to now we're going to we're going to be on the other side of that router, right? So what we're going to do is create a web server that is that machine that the router goes out to and requests a web page from. See, this is why I wanted to uh, draw this out so you, you can clearly see what it is we're doing. And, and at least for me, it helps it make more sense for me. So let's, uh, try, let's see if we can draw this a little bit better. Um, here's our router. Okay. Let's, let's say this is a Linksys. Okay. And uh, you have a couple of computers behind it. Okay. Computer one, computer two, computer three. Uh, you could also have some wireless stuff. Here's the antenna, right? So you have an iPad too. Okay. And we're going to say that uh, the internal IP address here that the router is giving everybody is uh, starts with 192.168.1.127.82. Okay. And then we're going to say dot x. Right, and X is just the variable for each of these guys. So each of them will start with 192.168.1, but this guy will be dot two, and this one will be dot three, dot four, so forth, dot five, right? And he keeps track. The link says keeps track of everybody. And uh, this this side, which goes out to the internet, is our internet cloud here. Okay, we'll say that uh, this side, you know, it will create a public IP, 70 dot, whatever. Okay. Uh, now, also, your your router itself also has an IP. If you see here, if you notice I started with 2, and then it's 3, 4, 5. I didn't start with 1 because generally your router will have 1, right? So your, your router will have two IP addresses. One is internal, and one is, is your public. So I'm drawing another router here, okay? Uh, so on this side, it'll be 192.168.1.1. Because when when one of your devices wants to request uh, a web page, it needs to send it to an IP address. So even though your computer's IP address is 192.168.1.2, when it sends a request, it's got to send it to uh, the Linksys router, and it needs to know its address. And later on, I'll show you how to set that up. Uh, but it, this computer will know that the router 
is at 192.168.1.1. So when it wants to request a web page, it requests the web page from 192.168.1.1. That's all it knows. That's its entire world. It knows just this. It doesn't know anything that's beyond here. Anything it wants, it just asks this guy. And this guy's job is to go get it. It sends it out to the internet using that public IP. What we're going to build today is a server on, on this side. Okay, So we're going to create a, a web server that when a request is sent, it hits the web server we're going to create. So we're, this is what we're going to create today, this web server. Okay, it's uh, HTTP, we'll just call it HTTP server, and um, we're going to install an operating system on this machine and set it up. And we're also going to set up a simple web page, and we'll log into it. And then what we'll do is log into one of these computers, open up a web browser, type in the uh, IP address or the URL of this web server. So we're going to create a web server. Okay, and we're going to give it a, a, a URL, like www.myserver.com, okay? We're actually going to do all the steps involved to set that up. And once we're done, we're going to log into one of these computers here, open up a web browser, type the URL for this server into it, and actually see the web page that we get. We're going to do all of that. I know my, my drawing here is miserable, but I hope this somehow clears up what we're doing here. We're going to create this computer right here, okay? All right, so let's delete this, and let's get started. So uh, we are going to install. Now, great thing about this is it's completely free. We're not going to use Windows. We're going to use Linux. and Linux is 100% free. You can install it on any computer. You can install it on as many computers as you want. You'll never have to pay a cent for it. Alright, so let's get started. 